Hello to all, I'm really excited to announce a new add-on called the Tailwind CSS version of the Prime UI library, starting with the Prime View. You know, we have this design token-based new architecture for styling where it's well-designed API to feed uh, the base CSS of Prime UI libraries with a set of design tokens. That design tokens map to CSS variables in the code and they map to the Figma tokens. So if you have a process where you have a designer and you'd like to uh, convert those themes uh, easily to the components, then that uh, version will be great. And in case you don't want to maintain a lot of things on your side, then the default start mode will be great. But if you prefer to do a lot of customization and you're not, you don't want to get limited by an API, although the, our styling uh, allows extending the CSS and introducing new tokens of your you know, custom design, but uh, if you'd like to offer a custom way where there's no API, no CSS overrides, nothing. And, you know, Tailwind is popular and we would like to offer a way where you are able to style everything with Tailwind components as well. So, you know, you can use Tailwind with primary libraries for layout purposes for many things. But what if you, you can just style components with Tailwind as well? So we had tried that with pass-through attributes in, uh, in Prime View. It worked for quite some time, but in the end, we thought we can do better because it had some limitations. Uh, it was not very convenient. Um, you had to learn an, a lot of things, uh, the sections of the internal internals of the components. And there were so many combinations to, to cross uh, usage of the you know components within the, within the components, nested components, composite components. There was no intelligence support, uh, so many things. So we decided to redo it. We had a couple of options like going headless, so but it was a rewrite. We have to rewrite everything, so we have to provide every component in a headless form. It will be a major rewrite, and we had a lot of things going on, you know, in the roadmap, so it will be a setback. Although many components support headless with templating, we decided we needed something fast and way better than what we provided before. We are not a comp Tailwind CSS component library, but the idea is to allow the prime libraries to be styled with Tailwind. So instead of rewriting everything, introducing something else with, you know, uh, Tailwind only component library, we decided to use a post processor, post CSS. And with post CSS, we rewritten everything with using the apply directive of uh, Tailwind. Let me show you. So this is a new website. I'm going, I will show it from the localhost. It's tailwind.primeu.org. Um, it's ev every feature set, entire feature set is here. Like, you know, even the newly introduced float labels, for example, the selects and the float labels, if the labels, everything is here, fully supported. And, you know, the dark modes and the colors and everything is, are here as well. So this is, although it looks the same as a default styling approach or prime styling architecture, it uses Tailwind behind the scenes. So if we check out input text, there's a theming section, you know, this is the style uh, it uses. At, so I personally did this. I rewritten everything with Tailwind uh, using our Tailwind CSS plugin. You know, the Tailwind doesn't have the concept of surfaces and primary colors, so we had we needed something like this. We have the surface palette and the primary palette. Primary palette is for accent color surfaces for everything else like the backgrounds, cards, borders. So. Instead of using uh, specific colors like green, blue, we had the plugin, Tailwind CSS dash Prime UI plugin. So I've written, rewritten everything with this, you know, every component. Uh, it actually took me a week and I'm usually quite busy with all the things, non-development things going on in my life. I'm actually quite busy and it only took me a week. So I really like the DX. The developer experience is really nice. So like the theme, uh, like the slider, for example, now we have the slider, slider handle, slider range, horizontal mode, and things like that. So how, how to use this stuff? And the idea, the idea is that you don't import these from node modules. You add these classes to your project. And the main advantage of this is that you don't need to learn anything. Since this class file resides in your application folder, 
You don't need to worry about overrides. You don't need to go to the developer tools, trying to figure out what the, the author of this open source library that you're using c came up with regarding the DOM, the class names. So the idea is that since we've done this hard part, you just need to grab this and copy it and paste it to your project and take it from there. And there's no design tokens, no JavaScript, no overrides, nothing to learn. Just good old, you know, old school. You just grab the code and customize in your project. And it has, for example, let's try to customize a simple uh, input text. Everything can be, you know, customized. So I've used Aura theme as our base. So I re-implemented that with Tailwind. So here is that, you know, I will come up with the new videos about how to install this with Vit, Nux, and you know, Prime Engine, Prime Rec is also getting this. We will also do it. Hopefully in the future, Prime Face as well, once we uh, figure out how to use web components with Prime Faces. So, okay. Here is uh, the Prime. It's so this is a Nux base. So it's just, in my application, I use this Tailwind CSS. And Tailwind CSS is something like, notes that I'm not using at Tailwind keyword, I'm grabbing this from uh, Tailwind node modules, Tailwind base, Tailwind components, Tailwind utilities. The components reside between the components and utilities because without CSS layers and things, if utilities came after the components, you will be able to easily override it as well in case you have two input texts in your application side by side. Uh, for that specific input case, you use the class attributes or something like this. You can easily customize a certain component uh, without doing it globally. So it, this location is quite important. You don't need to use important or CSS layers if, that, if, if that's before utilities. Some more stuff on that later. So let's find input text. So this Tailwind CSS imports Prime View Tailwind CSS, which is this one. I mean, you can rename everything. So the idea is that this folder, you just copy, grab it from GitHub. It's now on a release. You download the zip. Again, we do about setting it up later. But you download the zip. You put it in somewhere in your project. You include it in your app view, app.js, app component, ts, something. Um, so once it is in your application, of course, you need to comment or remove the components that you don't use. There is no automatic tree shaking here like the default modes. It's all full control. You can just choose what you want to choose, what you want to use so that you can watch your bundle size, although these CSS are not really joint files. So let's go to the input text. Now here, this is the one. One nice thing about it is that let's add some padding. Let's make it bigger. Now these are bigger, right? Now you can see it instantly. So I would like to add a thicker border, two pixels border. And let's say we have the shadows and hover border is border. So let's make it a bit more accessible, maybe even more thicker. So it's like just, it's there. And hover border surface 400, let's make it primary. So when I hover it, it gets my own color, of course. And focus somewhere, focus visible, focus border primary. Yeah. Okay. Now we have customized the borders and everything. And let's see, we have increased the padding. We have the LG version and the smaller version are available here. So one nice thing about it is that if you do a mistake like border primary, if you get two wise then you will get another in in the previous case if you check if you compare it with the pt version let me find it so this is the pt version here so the main difference is that in the pt version passive version you inject these tailwind classes into dom elements of the input so in that in this case the root gets leading non flex one blah 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 and our team decided to add commands so that you can find your way around. I decided not to, to keep it simple. And I just use new lines to indicate the sections like this one's for hover, this one's for background and things like that. And the problem is that if you make it a typo here, you don't get notified and there's no IntelliSense. If I get command space, nada. So here, if I, if I do it with the PT, without the PT, 
So if you hit command space, let's say BG, you get all the nice Tailwind stuff here. Even the R, you know, the Prime plugin, Prime UI plugin stuff like, uh, or primary, these are derived from the Tailwind CSS Prime UI plugin. And it's also nice that you get, you know, code completion and error handling for you. So that's why I've easily managed to convert these classes. I took some, I took my coffee, just opened a nice music and I just converted everything manually. And it took me like a week to convert everything. So imagine that how you can customize it without any borders, by borders, not CSS borders, no, no limitations because you are free on your own. What about any downsides of this approach? Since this is like a code ownership model, you this part resides is located in your application, so you have to maintain it. So if something changes drastically, like if the page, if the developers, the maintainers decided to make this like a dash, okay, let's add. So you, we woke up in the morning and let's say, okay, we should add a dash to the CSS classes, and in that case, this will be broken. But luckily, I mean. We have done this part in Prime U4, in Prime EG18, and Prime 11 You know, these libraries are becoming very stable. We have our own roadmap now, like these advanced components that we would like to move on to. So there is no changes planned. And if we add new features, these will be these class names and the PT names will be the same. We have done that part already, so we are not really expecting any change. For example. One thing missing is that input text has sizes, but select doesn't. There's no size option. Uh, but that's coming in, in the newer versions. But in that case, there will be a new CSS selector like P select S P select LG, and they will be documented. And those are opt-in features. So if you like to use those features, you need to uh, watch the change log and we will document every change. But again, other than that, uh, you know, if you go this route, you have, you're just you just have to maintain it yourself. But the power is that you don't you can do whatever you want with it. And the nice thing about it, this is, this is super stable. So I mean, we do not expect a lot of changes. Maybe a little just bug fixes, but I think all looks good for now. So you have two options. You can choose choose the start mode with the design tokens or this one with tailwind. With this one, if you want to do a lot of customization, I, I should put a new video on how which one to choose, styled or unstyled. And also an important thing is that you, we just introduced something called theme none. So theme none disables the default theming, but unlike unstyled, there are no design tokens with the theme none, and there are no default CSS, nothing. Only this P something classes are located in the DOM so that these classes still apply. And final thing I'd like to show is that you can also use the tail and team function and apply so that you can access these uh, in case you're, there's no tailwind class that that's available. You, you'd like to, you're trying to do a fancy animation. You don't need to write a plugin for every missing class in tailwind core. So that in, in that case, you can use regular CSS functions as well. And you have access to the tailwind core with the team function and apply. And these are post CSS based. So for example, dialog component uses a button internally. So you don't need to automatically include the button. The dialog will also include the button for you. If you also include this button manually, it will be skipped and it's very efficient actually. And this is not super regular uh, CSS. If you write some duplicated content, it's merged uh, into one. So it's very, um, it's processed. CSS, let's say. And um, that's it for me. I will create more videos about how to set things up because it's a bit different. Uh, I've tried to come up with documentation here in case you don't. Uh, and also there's a sample application for Witten Next. And the nice thing about is that this stuff is also will be available for Prime Engine Prime React. Uh, since we are migrating away from PT, they, are, they can also be ported easily to Angular and React. And what about the PT users? I mean, you can still use it. You don't have to migrate to this. If you prefer that approach, you can still use it. But you know, you might also want to check out this one to see how the, you can check out the developer experience because IntelliSense support and error handling are for me, it's a big, big deals. 
Okay, uh, thank you and see you on the next tutorial.